It's great to be with you all. Uh, welcome. Uh, we'll uh, have a period of meditation and then we'll do the presentation. In preparing for our meditation, I'm going to bring up a uh, slide. You should be seeing now a wonderful work of art by Nico Mendes Gomez, the inspired Rosicrucian artist. It's entitled El Arca Divina or the Divine Ark. It was painted in 1959 and it's a fairly large work, 153 centimeters high by 96 centimeters uh, across. Yes. And it's a mixed uh, technique, uh, gauche and pan on board. Now on the theme of the divine ark, you'll see a wealth of symbolism in here. You'll see things associated with the Holy Grail, the Temple of Solomon, the Tabernacle of Moses, and the Ark of the Covenant, but also the Tree of Life and the Sephiroth. And you'll see towards the bottom, there's the red, the red flames, the trials and struggles of humanity and sentient beings as they evolve and grow and mature and rise up uh, to be the, the enlightened being. Depicted here is the master Yeheshua, but it's something we're all called to. The Rosicrucians call, refer to it as a Rose Croix uh, in French, or the Rose Cross state of the fully mature uh, human being united uh, with the one or in complete rapport with the divine within. You know, it's rather special to note by the title, the divine ark. Recall earlier, we had a presentation on the mystical ark of Noah, uh, particularly emphasizing the medieval mystic of the 12th century Hugh of St. Victor and his profound teachings to his students. Well, one of his brilliant students name was Richard of St. Victor. And Richard uh, is one of the major mystics of the Western tradition in the medieval period, along with persons such as Hildegard of von Bingen, Bernard of Clairvaux in the 12th century. And similar to his master, Richard uh, talked at length and wrote at length about the Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle. And they had a deep allegorical and what would be said also referred to as anagogical or mystical meaning that the tabernacle, as you moved in the tabernacle and passed by the two arcs and various other ritualistic accoutrements on your way to the Ark of the Covenant and the Holy of Holies, you pass through the various stages of human evolution uh, to our oneness with the divine to achieve mystical union. Mysticism is a very beautiful word for this because it means the uniting uh, with the divine, the full maturation of the human being, the science of art and love. In this way, Richard uh, used the Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle as a way showing the evolution of humanity, but also embedded in it was a meditation technique, which will, will in fact follow now, because as you move from the outer courtyard, just like the outer parts of our being, deeper, more deeply within ourselves to the Ark of the Covenant, we're moving deep, more deeply within ourselves to the different layers or layers of mind to that unified state deep within us, for to as the, ma the master within or the inner self in the Rosicrucian tradition, fully united with the cosmic. The cosmic is another special word used by the Rosicrucians to mean <clears throat> all natural and spiritual laws and the entirety of the cosmos that's imbued with the in divine intelligence. We'll apply that concept of mysticism and the cosmic as we make our spiritual ascent. You notice here, the ark, um, <clears throat> the ark and the tabernacle depict, depicted here, as well as would also be ultimately associated with the pattern that would uh, mature into as the Temple of Solomon. We see the dove descending, which will also uh, help in terms of the enlightenment that we can experience in meditation. You noticing the, the spiraling action here, particularly center, centered on the, on the heart and the various wonderful use of colors and emanations. All these things will apply in our meditation period using the booklet Liber 777 and in a way the profound writings of the great mystic Richard of St. Victor. So once you've got a good sense of this image and how we uh, keep it in mind because we'll apply it, I invite you to close your eyes now and turn inward. We'll have a period of cosmic attunement with the celestial sanctum. Just concentrate on your breath. 
in, inhaling and exhaling, enjoying the beautiful rhythm of the breath. It's a surprisingly simple act, but a very profound one, especially when we spiritualize it. Enjoy the rhythm of the breath and the rhythm with the cosmos as depicted in the wonderful picture of the divine arc by Nicomendes Gomez. Recall the Rosicrucian's cosmic keyboard as if a great keyboard of a piano was extending to encompass all vibrations in the universe. As we may grow and mature as human beings, as mystics, we learn to play masterfully that cosmic keyboard for the different manifestations needed in our lives and in service to others. This simple act of breathing helps practice us in that regard. I think as you breathe inward and outward, especially as you extend the exhalation, particularly stimulate the large vagus nerve in the body. It leads to a relaxation response and a deep sense of well-being. Our inner outer natures mirror each other and they're unified. We learn from each, they learn from each other how to be in harmony. Or as Rosicrucians say, to be in harmonium with our environment, but also with all the actions within our body, different flows, the blood, the electricity, the nervous system, and so forth. But also in harmony with our kin, our friends and family, and neighbors, and all sentient beings. And also deeply with our this God within in a state of ecstasy, which is our natural state and birthright will increasingly come into as we rise up into the cosmic shortly. I think as you've done the rhythmic breathing, if you can emphasize through your nostrils to fill your air with the vital light, your air deeply into your lungs for the cosmic essence and the vital life force, you'll feel a tingling throughout your body. It's very enriching, very ennobling. You feel the body even more as a, as a temple of light. Now let us begin to ascend to the heights of the celestial sanctum, the center of the universe, the center of our being. Begin this ascent, let us say together, may the divine essence of the cosmic infuse my being and cleanse me of all impurities of mind and body, that I may enter the celestial sanctum and attune in pureness and worthiness. So be it in truth, so mote it be. Now with our eyes closed, let us visualize ourselves rising up, up above the room we're in and the home we're at. You can look down on the house, rise up and see your neighborhood and all the system in order and how it was laid out. And all the persons going about their life's work and missions and rise up higher again over the town or the city where you dwell, or the geographic area. And start to take in the region of the province or the state where you live. Feel the exhilaration of the ascent, moving up faster and faster. See the great weather systems below Take in the entire state or province where you live and rise up faster again. Now take in the entire great nation where you dwell. See again the various rivers, weather systems, the mountains, the plains, the great river systems, the coastal waters, whatever is applicable to your great nation. And radiate your love and well being down. all sentient beings living there and all life forms. And let's rise up higher and again and see the continent where you dwell. And now even the hemisphere where you dwell, whether it be the North or South hemisphere, and move up faster and faster again and take in the beautiful blue jewel of the earth, rotating about its axis on its two poles, the North and South poles. 
See how beautiful it is. The great spiraling weather systems, blue oceans and seas, the land masses and greens and browns. Be grateful for this wonderful home, the temple of the earth, for our evolvement in a place of learning lessons. And let's rise up faster and faster again, and let's take in the solar system and see the beautiful red planet of Mars, the spectacular rings of Saturn, and the huge planet Jupiter revolving about center planets of the solar system go about our sun, our star. See the great elliptical orbits and the beautiful system in order as they go around the sun. Let's pass up higher and higher again, now going faster and faster, way faster than the speed of light because we're transcending space and time now. Use great inner strength, just as past Grand Master Robert Daniels admonished us. Use great inner spiritual force to rise up because as we do that, we'll go deeper and deeper into our own nature. By the law of correspondence, this great ascent will take us deeper and deeper into the center of our being simultaneously. Let's rise up faster and faster, passing by various stellar phenomena, our solar system stars just way in the distance now. See quasars and pulsars and black holes, even the great black hole that some think are at the center of our universe. See the great energy, supernovae as they burst and draw forth tremendous light. Let's see nebulae and the beautiful colors of the universe, wonderful spectrums of light inspiring us, great sense of harmony, the way we're seeing the handiwork, the artwork of the creator, the divine, which inspires our own works in our own life. Let's pass right out of the Milky Way galaxy, the great spiraling galaxy, and see its great spiraling motions about its center, just as the Earth revolves about its axis. Our planets, our solar system, right, revolve about, about the sun. So the Milky Way galaxy revolves its great arms about its center. Let us look up and see other galaxies and other myriad stellar phenomena and find it so inspiring and exhilarating. Can you use great inner force, but do it with ease. Now is not the time to be passive. We'll be passive once we reach the heights of the celestial sanctum. Just speed on faster and faster. See various other spiraling galaxies and other galaxies and other forms. See the birth of planets and galaxies and stars great system and order, both within and without, seen and unseen in the universe through the great intelligence, through the cosmic. And see even now super clusters of galaxies and start to take in the tremendous expanse. This great expanse suggests to us the infinite within us, by the law of suggestion. Be astounded by the beauty, the great harmony and order both without us and within us. Start to sense the great revolving of the universe itself about a great cosmic axis that's been spoken of by mystics since time immemorial and antiquity. Sense this great revolving action, a great axis. Let us speed towards the midpoint of that axis. Faster and faster, getting closer and closer. And as you reach towards that midpoint of the great axis about which the cosmos revolves, slow up, stop there and fill in there the imagery of the, your celestial sanctum. It may be an inspiring temple, such as the Grand Temple at Rosicrucian Park in San Jose, California or maybe an inspiring cathedral, gurdwara, Buddha stupa, or Jewish synagogue. 
or a Hindu mandir or some other sacred place special to you or some other inspiring place in nature like a great vista from a high bank overlooking an ocean or a bay. You see all the waves below suggesting infinity or maybe a high mountain top or high hilltop seeing a vast vista before us suggestive of the cosmic consciousness or maybe a sacred grove of trees up into an earlier form of temple or a beautiful meadow and take in the sights and the sounds, fill it in. There may be beautiful symbolism with stained glass windows or incense or wonderful smells of nature. Inspire your outer nature so it allows us it to be still and inspired to go deeper and deeper inward at the center of the cosmos, our celestial sanctum. Continue to fill in this inspiring sacred place, your celestial sanctum. Visualize there are two other Rosicrucians who have ascended with you and others of like mind. And all sentient beings who are seekers for the oneness to fill their mission in life. Once you fill in this inspiring place and feel the exhilaration of being there, feel the cosmic essence of the right of life force, all the more charged in healing your body, an especially charged place at the center of your being, at the center of the cosmos. Take some time to dwell there and what recruits accretions refer to as peace profound, the most profound form of peace. It's always with us, always there for us to access, no matter what we're facing in our life, no matter what's going on. This great sense of maturity and well-being is there. Well there now in the deep silence of peace profound. If you find your mind wandering, just lovingly and gently, bring it back to the rhythm of the breath, focused on your celestial sanctum. Whatever arises in the mind, just let it unfold. Keep returning to focus on the breath and on the celestial sanctum. Just feel whatever there is to feel. Meditation is an act of non-avoidance. Just continue to breathe deeply, this deep center of your being. Just view this time with the celestial sanctum as a mini retreat, strengthening, rejuvenating, regenerating. Be strengthened to do whatever you need to do this day and further fulfill your mission in life. Now, as we continue to dwell at this deep center of our being and of the cosmos, let us undertake further special spiritual operations of the work and worship of the Rosicrucian Order and Mark. As part of our ascent and meditation with the celestial sanctum, let us conduct a special mystical exercise in meditation 
where we see a bathing flow of the cosmic essence coming down on us, life force flowing down on us. An emphasis on harmony, youth, and beauty. Just feel the life force flowing down on you. If you're in under a waterfall, just feel the life force flowing like water on you, enriching and healing your being and body. Think and be harmony, youth, and beauty. As you do this, I think you'll find the tingling in your body intensifies. It's very enriching, very healing. Think of this special meditation exercise as a form of cosmic baptism. Just continue to think and feel and be harmony, youth, and beauty as the vital life force rains down on you, bathing you. Just keep coming back to the flow of the cosmic essence through you. In harmony, youth, beauty. Feel the enrichment and the exhilaration of being healed and made whole. Now let us conduct another spiritual operation of the Rosicrucian Order and Mark. Brothers and sorrows and participants, I invite you now to concentrate on your heart center where you dwell at the heights of the celestial sanctum. Focus on the heart. See it as the center of the universe your heart at the center of the universe, surrounded by the spiritual kingdom and the consciousness of God or the consciousness of the divine. So continue to see your heart as you focus on it as the center of the universe, surrounded by the spiritual kingdom and the consciousness of the divine. Just dwell in this fashion any profound insights come up, just let them unfold. But keep concentrating in this fashion. Again, enjoy the enrichment, the rejuvenation, and the regeneration.
continue to dwell on the heart center, surrounded by the spiritual kingdom and the consciousness of the divine. Let the force of love build as we prepare ourselves for an act of service. Now as the great psychic and spiritual energy builds in the heart, let us radiate love and well-being out to all those who have petitioned the Grand Lodge of the Rosicrucian Ramwork for health and healing. Have your affiliate bodies if you're associated with one. And all those you know who are in need of health and healing at this time. Radiate love and well-being from the center of your heart and ultimately to all sentient beings throughout the cosmos. Just let the love flow out like from a great floodlight, like gushing out from a fire hydrant, the light out from a supernovae. Just fill the universe with this love and all those in need. Just let it flow. At first, you may wish to use a lot of spiritual energy to get the emotion going. At a certain point, I think you may find that the radiations of love and well-being speed up and you have a sense that it's being received. And you may be able to just let the flow continue without conscious effort at a certain point. Once that's achieved, just continue to dwell deep stillness on your heart. As the love and well-being flows out to all in need of conscious effort, continue a while longer on your heart, the center of the universe, surrounded by the spiritual kingdom and the consciousness of the divine. Soon, fratters and sorors and participants, 
the beginner descent from the heights of the celestial sanctum, assured that the love and well being continue to radiate to all those in need as an act of service, cosmic attunement, and as a way of life. As we fulfill our mission in life. Now, for me to conclude this period of the work of the Silent Council, in conjunction with the Council of Solus, we'll say, it pleases the cosmic, it is done, so mote it be. Or let us continue our meditation before we begin our descent. We may wish to express gratitude for this opportunity to be of service. Feel the healing forces within us. Feel the enrichment and ennoblement of the cosmic consciousness within us. This opportunity to ever more evolve and mature. Now let us begin our descent from the heights of the celestial sanctum. We're expressing a prayer of gratitude. Let us pass by rapidly. Tremendous speed, the super clusters of galaxies, myriad stars and stellar phenomena and their wondrous beauty under the handiwork of the creator. We sense the intelligence viewed throughout the cosmos in the form of the cosmic. Now pass by individual galaxies, some spiraling, some in other forms. Gradually see in the distance, the great spiraling galaxy of the Milky Way galaxy, our great home. We come towards the great spiraling arm we live in and through it to see past myriad stars, pulsars and quasars and black holes and see in the distance our solar system, great fiery ball of the sun and the beautiful blue jewel of the earth. Let us come back to the hemisphere where we dwell, the continent, the nation, the province or state, geographic area or town or city, back to our neighborhood, back to our home. May we say together, may the God of my heart sanctify this attunement of self with the celestial sanctum. So be it in truth, so mote it be. And come back into the room where you left off. Chair or however you're, you're seated in or however you're situated. And when you're ready, I invite you to open your eyes and stretch a very balanced state of consciousness, rejuvenate, rejuvenated, and reinvigorated, ready further for the work and worship of the Rosicrucian Order and work. Thank you. And our presentation today is entitled Meditation in Depth 5. And we just had a wonderful opportunity to experience meditation firsthand. For the Rosicrucians are very practical. And in mysticism, first and foremost, is experience and knowing from experience. Now, meditation is the key and central practice of spirituality and the mastery of life. Much progress can be made when meditation is practiced daily. For this presentation, we'll pass through a series of questions. The first one is, where should I meditate? Well, a simple answer is wherever you feel comfortable to do so. But to elaborate some more on that, let me show you this slide here of an artwork that includes the depiction in the background 
of a personal sanctum, of the type that the Rosicrucians have as a home sanctum or their sanctum in their home. You can see it's wonderful to have a special spiritual place in your home as its center, just like the center of your being is the master within, just as we went to the center of the cosmos. Not the inner home entertainment system, but the home sanctum, spiritual place where we go to commune and meditate. Now, this can be a place where we learn through the comprehensive studies of the Rosicrucians weekly, that it can be a place where we can use incense and music of inspiring nature and lower lightings through candlelight. We can drink a glass of cold water for purification, perform a simple and profound ritual and certain other features of value. Indeed, over time, such a home sanctum becomes charged with the vibratory energy of our periods of cosmic attunement and becomes a very soothing and welcoming place for meditation. However, it can be borne in mind that in addition to meditating in a special place in our home, meditating outdoors can also be quite wonderful because the sounds of nature can connect us with those great rhythms of the cosmos, just like the rhythm of our breath. The sounds of the wind going through a cedar tree or a maple tree, for example, a quiet brook. Often people have meditated for years. They haven't done much meditation outdoors and they're astounded by how conducive those sounds are to deepening their meditation, just like that vibratory energy of our home sanctum can be. Also though, when we're away from home, maybe we're uh, at work or we're traveling, we can find places to meditate even for a few minutes or even much longer. These periods of meditation can still be very helpful, even without incense, music, and related features. So let us bear these in mind for our daily meditations, that there can be flexibility and ingenuity as to where we meditate. But it's always good to have that home sanctum to keep coming back to, to emphasize to the outer mind the importance of meditation and doing it there. Now, another question uh, that's been brought forward is, what were some of the meditation methods emphasized by the past chief executive officer, past imperator, H. Spencer Lewis of the Rosicrucian Order Handbook? Well, in a way we've answered that already experientially because we applied the book Lieber 777 and uh, towards the end of this presentation, so our Karen will post in the chat a reference for Lieber 777 and some other references I referred to. But it's a wonderful booklet that's available free of charge. And it deals with cosmic attunement with the celestial sanctum. It's a special spiritual exercise that H. Spencer Lewis developed when he was imperator. In a way, it's depicted here in a pen and ink drawing that he uh, drew that you're seeing now on the theme of the cathedral soul, the soul which is uh, another term for the celestial sanctum. Celestial sanctum is a more universal terminology. Here we see a person, a Rosicrucian student, seated, studying their spirit, spiritual lessons, a monograph, they study weekly, or some other inspiring literature. And they're by a fire. And that fire is burning forth with great light and energy, but it's also symbolic of what the inner seeker is seated there is inwardly experiencing as he attunes, she attunes with the celestial sanctum, just as we did. You'll see the two candlelights are suggestive of the Rosicrucian's home sanctum. And out of the dark, of following the law of duality is the great sense of the light, which is the other element of the duality, and thus leading us to experience of unity, which is at the heart and soul and purpose of mysticism. So by doing that exercise, Lieber 77, we did one of the exercises emphasized by Pastor Imperator Lewis, but also when we bathed in the flow of the cosmic essence of the vital life force with an emphasis on harmony, youth and beauty, which is to be done as a daily form of cosmic baptism. That was an that's from an inspiring article on the inner meaning of the fountain of youth. If you ever wondered what the deepest meaning of the fountain of youth that exercise you do is part of that. And I'll give you a reference from an essay by past imperator H. Spencer Lewis on this, if you want to see more details. Also, remember when we focused on the heart, 
as though it was at the center of the universe, surrounded by the spiritual kingdom of the conscious divine. That was another spiritual exercise in meditation emphasized by past imperator H. Spencer Lewis. It's a wonderful thing to do daily. Inspiring influences and sense of contact with others and various important insights will come forward and time can often go by very quickly as we're attuned with the cosmic. That's another exercise that was emphasized by the past imperator. Related to this, uh, could be asked, you know, what is a spiritual exercise recommended not only by past imperator H. Spencer Lewis, but the renowned, another renowned mystic that I spoke of earlier, the 12th century mystic Richard of St. Victor. I talked there about just with that inspiring artwork by Nicomendes Gomez, that as we go deeper and deeper into ourselves, that's part of the spiritual meaning of the story of the tabernacle of Moses and the Ark of the Covenant. As we pass by the two altars and various other ritualistic accoutrements, we're passing through the different phases of the mind, the objective, the subjective, the subconscious, to the cosmic mind, to the Ark of the Covenant, for, which is the equivalent of the rose cross state or the experience of, un, of in complete unity, the oneness with the one, following the Rosicrucian tradition and that of the victorines of Richards of St. Victor, his illustrious teacher, Hugh of St. Victor. So often we'll find that in spiritual teachings, in a veiled way, in the deepest mystical sense, medicines of meditation are being given to us. Now, in a more practical way too, sometimes it's asked about meditation. Is it okay if I get distracted? The short answer is yes. In fact, distraction has had a value over the evolution of humanity to assist in becoming aware of threats and important features in the environment. This some refer to as mind wandering is part of the experience of meditation and we can accept it without any self negativity, no self judgment, just lovingly and gently bringing focus back on to the meditation techniques such as concentration on the breath as we did. You see meditation is an act of non avoidance. So when other thoughts arise, we can consider them as passing on the screen of mind. Mind wandering indeed can lessen as we become more experienced and practiced in meditation, but accept them fully as part of the experience. In fact, there can sometimes be meditations where we think we are distracted much of the time, but lo and behold, when we get up, we feel rejuvenated, uplifted, because even a brief period in a meditative state is rich, greatly enriching to us. Great. Also, it's hard to assess how much we're being distracted in meditation because we're going in and out of a deeper state of consciousness. Now, another question about meditation sometimes comes up is, can part of the experience of meditation occur after the meditation session? The answer is, again, simply yes. Important insights that may have occurred during the formal meditation session may not have been impressed or registered on the outer self, particularly the subjective mind. However, those insights may later in the day register on the outer self and the objective mind. We may even realize that the intuitive insight first began to arise during our meditation session earlier that day. See something we see or hear is said to us and allows the other mind to close that deeper impression that was bubbling up during our formal meditation session. It gives us a new sense of the value and well, well-being that comes from meditation. You know, also the deep sense of well-being and wholeness and strength that meditation brings into uh, us into can be increasingly experienced during and after meditation session, which indicates that the meditative state is continuing. In fact, with regularly, regular daily practice of meditation, that meditative state becomes a pervasive and enriching way of life throughout each day. Another important question about meditation 
is is self-healing central to meditation? And the short answer again is yes. In fact, self-healing can be viewed as a primary purpose and meaning of meditation. As the heart relaxes in meditation, as we just did, many wonderful and healing acts occur within us that we have discussed in earlier presentations, such as the balancing of the two phases or branches, the autonomic nervous system. The anti-inflammatory action takes place, the pain reduction. There's more self-deceptance. Anxiety is reduced and our mood is elevated. There's more intentional control, so we have increased cognitive functionality. Our sleep is enhanced. There's a boosting of the immune system. And many other wonderful things occur. But also, I can mention that as the heart relaxes through meditation, it slows down. And as I mentioned, there's a dynamic balance of the two branches of the nervous system. One of the other wonderful things that occurs is that our self-defensiveness decreases so that we can be more present and aware of our lives and our needs and what we need to do. We're less overwhelmed and we're greatly strengthened. This also allows us to be more aware and supportive of others, service. Indeed, meditation is an act of self-compassion, thereby also increasing our compassion for others. In an expansive and inspiring way, we sense healing means to make whole. And meditation is very much about bringing us into that wholeness. And we can thereby, in service, assist others in coming into that wholeness as well. So in summary now, I will say that we have covered some common and not so common questions about meditation. And we've continued to explore and experience how meditation makes for the most direct and sure wise counsel in our daily lives and increases our well-being and capacity for service. Thank you.